What's up everybody and welcome back to the channel. In today's video, we're gonna be discussing the surprise drug test my flight had to go through, what it was like and what you should expect. But before we get into that, let's cover some basics. My name is Michael Inman and I'm an airman in the United States Air Force. I upload a video every Monday, unless it's a holiday and or unless I'm taking a break. If you like military and or Air Force content, definitely hit the subscribe button and make sure you turn the notification bell to on so you know when I upload a brand new video. So without further ado, let's get into this week's video. So let's get something obvious right out the way. There's no guarantee that one, your flight will have a random drug test, and two, that it will look just like what our flights did. But I hope this information is useful to you so that you are a little less surprised on if it does happen to your flight. So where to begin? Now, it was probably week one or week two, so following both zero week and, if applicable, any quarantine weeks that your flight does experience. But for us, we were probably in week one or week two. And it was a pretty normal day. Let's say it's a Wednesday, because we really don't know, right? Now, the day that it happened actually was quite, quite busy. It was a normal day, but it was so jam-packed that, that the whole day really was a blur. And by the time the day finally ended, we were all exhausted and probably fell asleep within 10 minutes. So this is how the day was going before our big surprise in the evening. We woke up, per usual. You know, you hear the music, you jump out of bed. We had had breakfast, and then after breakfast, we of course started into details. Now, details is probably a 30 to 45 minute process of making the dorm look beautiful. After details, which, you know, eventually maybe I'll tell you guys what I did. Oh wait, sweeper, go! <laughs> Anywho, after details, we then had two hours of class, and Class, of course, varied depending upon what week you were in, but let's say this day we were focusing on how to do CPR. Actually pay attention during those classes because they're very important. Now, after the two hours of, let's say, first aid, we then went to PT, and following PT, we showered. Following the shower, we then had a very brief meeting in the day room in which we did something called What Now Airmen. Now, I'm not going to get into What Now Airmen is because that's a whole situation. So many, so many opinions, so many critiques. I'm sure you can Google it. And for all I know, they've scrapped it. I don't know. But just know there's a little bit of a group discussion on what you should do in certain situations and it was maybe or is called what now airmen following what now airmen we then left the day room and we did finally get to have lunch and so following lunch we then of course had marching practice which may be something that is very regular for all flights but since we were the flag bearing flights uh, or maybe it's color bearing, I really should look up the title, I'm sorry. Regardless, since we were the flight that was going to be carrying all of the United States flags during the final graduation parade ceremony, we had quite a few um, rehearsals and or marching practices that we would have to go to. After that marching practice, which maybe lasts an hour and a half to two hours, we then had a practice locker inspection. Are you still with me? Because this is a very busy day, but it lets you understand what you're in for. Meaning we went back into the dormitories, we had maybe 15 minutes to get our lockers and our drawers into some sort of order so that both our peer could give us a look down to see how we're doing, if we're getting any closer to what a perfect locker looks like. So then after that, our element leaders and then finally our MTIs could do a very quick walkthrough to just gauge if the lockers are looking generally acceptable. Following the mock locker inspection or the practice locker inspection, we then were released for dinner. And then following dinner, we would head back up to the dormitory and go into what is it called the day room for mail pass out. Now, if you've watched a couple of my videos, you do know that mail pass out is both a really exciting time and can be a really emotionally distressing time for some of our peers and or yourself. So please be mindful when you are getting mail to not be overly exuberant uh, in front of your peers who have not gotten mail for weeks and are just feeling alone and forgotten. Okay, empathy, it still exists, I promise. Try to use some. So, after the mailroom pass out, usually, 
this is when we would, you know, start rolling socks, uh, which pretty much just means you go to the bed of the peep of like the person in the flight that you're really cool with and or you go to the bed where all of your click tends to go there when you have a little bit of free time. And yes, you do start to roll socks, but in this situation near the end of the day, usually it just means, you know, you shoot the <laughs> AKA, you just chit chat, you laugh, you talk about the day, you talk about back home um, until it's finally time to wash up, uh, brush your teeth and go to bed. Now, following meal pass out, this is what is usually supposed to happen, right? Are we tracking that clearly this time around? That just isn't gonna be how the day ends. After meal pass out, we maybe had five minutes in which we all started meandering to our clicks favorite spot. But that is when our MTI out of nowhere said, everyone line up on the wall and be prepared to leave the door. And we said, what? what what's going on? What's happening? It's like, it's 8 p.m. What's happening? Now, that's a normal reaction, but it's even funnier when you are an element leader and you literally were not briefed on something. Like, not that we get told everything, but there is this slight like, what's happening i i don't remember seeing this on the schedule i always check the schedule because people like to ask us what the heck's happening next like what are we doing after dinner <laughs> so we usually as element leaders or you know as a dorm chief try to know what's on the schedule for the day so when we're surprised we're very surprised so anywho people start looking at us like did you forget to tell us something and then we start looking at each other like no I did not. This is new. This is news to me. Anywho, we all line up on the, you know, on the wall. And then we finally, um, of course, exit the dormitory and line up on the yellow dots outside the dormitory, which you will become very familiar with the yellow dots outside your dormitory once you go to basic military training. It's just a proper place to line up and create your element and or AKA lines. And so we all line up outside. Now there's kind of a big question going on like, are we in trouble or not? Are we all about to do tools? Now, tools, if you remember, are when your flight is disciplined via physical exertion. <laughs> so drop down and give me 25 push-ups, something like that. Uh, so we weren't quite sure if that was going to happen, but that was probably all of our best bet. But after lining up and doing, you know, our typical lining up, sizing up and straightening up, that also equates to getting in a line, sizing up, so doing taller tapping to make sure your flight gets into the proper, you know, structure order in which the tallest people are near the front and it gets shorter and shorter as you go down the element because that's how they want the aesthetic to be when we are marching. And it doesn't, it doesn't really matter, it could have been the opposite, but regardless, the way it is, taller people in the front, shorter people in the back. So you, get in the line to line up, size up, you know, so it looks like this. <laughs> and then finally, you straighten up, which means I don't remember the command and I'm apologizing in advance, but it's when someone says something and you all start just tapping your feet, moving a little bit, like doing like choppy steps so that you are directly behind the person in front of you and in line with the person to your left. That is your, uh, second marching lesson. I hope you enjoy. So we do that because at this point we're just waiting outside with no idea what's going on. And then maybe after 10 minutes, our MTIs finally come down and they snap us to attention and we start marching into the night. Now, of course, I remind you it was 8 p.m. So it is pretty much pitch black. There's not like city lights throughout BMT Lackland Air Force Base, and on top of that, we're in La we're in Alcatraz, so we're we're out there. We are not in the middle of BMT Lackland. We are on the outskirts of BMT Lackland. <laughs> and so we start marching, and at first, you know, we're all unsure of where we're going, but you you know, you assume it can't be that far because it's nighttime and we've had dinner and we've already done mail pass out. How far could we be going, right? Wrong. 
So we start marching. And first, you know, you start marching past the other Alcatraz buildings. But then you start marching past the parade field of Alcatraz and you're starting to get a little farther, right? Then you keep marching. We just kept marching. And now we're passing all of Disney and the parade field and the marching pad and the PT pad of Disney. And we're like, okay, that's peculiar. We don't get this far too often, but you know, we've, we've been this far. I mean, we're, maybe we'll go somewhere in Disney, I don't know. And then we go over the bridge. There's a bridge. You'll love the bridge. I don't know, there's a bridge. <laughs> So we go over the bridge and we're like, oh, we're, we're going, we're going somewhere. We are making a journey. Who knows where we'll end up? This is so exciting. So we're marching and we're marching. So then we pass the medical facility, which is like, okay, I mean, no one thought we were going to be there, but now we're not trying to guess where we're going anymore. At this point, we are literally just trying to see which like, like markers uh, we pass. Cause you know, once you run out of them, now you're really lost. <laughs> so we see the medical building on our right and we're like, okay, we know where we are, still interesting. We're not going there either, let's keep moving. We keep on marching into the night, it's great. And now we're getting to the BX and shop at. And of course, a part of our brain goes, maybe there's a last minute shopping trip because someone needed something and they said, you know what? Let's just quickly let anyone get what they need for 20 minutes, call it day. No, that is incorrect. We do not stop. So now we march past the BX and we have, now this is rare. I can, I'm, I can count on my hand and really I'm lying because I mean, I can count on my hand, but this is also just not necessary wording. We had only been this far once our entire time at BMT, past the BX. And that was solely, solely for, what is it called? Um, uniform, like, distribution, AKA clothing issue. You know where you get your boots and you get your uniform for the first time ever? That is the only time we've been this far. Northwest, Southeast, I don't know what direction we were walking. We just kept walking. So there goes the clothing issue building. You know, on our left, just we just keep going. And now all of us have zero clue what this could be for. Maybe we're going to play, I don't know, cops and robbers in the dark. I have no idea. <laughs> so we keep on marching. We keep on marching, right? And finally, we see this light in the distance. <laughs> and the light is under an overhang. And the overhang is under what looks like Alcatraz. So, you know, your brain for a half second goes, have we walked in a circle? Where, where am I? Am I losing it? Am I finally losing it even in its only week two? So we get closer <laughs> and it does appear to be an Alcatraz. But the thing is, is if you thought our Alcatraz was bad, this was rough. This was like a decrepit Alcatraz, like abandoned, like code red, I shouldn't be here. You better not step on a nail because you're going to get tetanus. I'm sorry. <laughs> so we, we get closer to Alcatraz 2.0 <laughs> and we get closer to the one overhang that is lit because it's a very long complex this Alcatraz 2.0 and only a portion of it is lit so finally our flight is navigated via our MTI's instructions to the lit underhang under Alcatraz 2.0 and we are silent there is no sound outside we are in the far far lands of BMT Lackland. <laughs> and by that I just mean Lackland Air Force Base is huge, but there's a portion of it that is for BMT. We are deep into it, like the far outskirts of that portion of Lackland Air Force Base. And so we are told to, ah, uh, who would have thought, park it on the yellow dots that are under this overhang, similar to our Alcatraz. <laughs> and so we do just that. And our MTI walks away from our flight and goes into what I would say is an unmarked door. <laughs> I swear there wasn't a sign, there wasn't something hanging from the ceiling. It was like it was meant to be ominous. That's what it was. So he goes in the door. We all are like, we're gonna get murdered. It's been nice, toodaloo. <laughs> So we don't know what's going on, but eventually, eventually he comes out 
with this other man. And the other man seems nice. Maybe he's a contractor. I don't know who he is, but he, I was just happy there's another human inside the building. Cause once again, now it's like 8.30 PM, it's cold. Our noses are probably running. And we're just standing out this, outside this building with no idea, no purpose in mind, no idea of when we're getting home. So the man comes outside. Uh, he, you know, um, gets the attention of our flight. And that is when it is communicated to us that lo and behold, we are going to be doing a drug test tonight. And I don't know if I was irritated because I'm like, I don't, I don't do drugs. So was this necessary? Could we do this? Can we have done this tomorrow? Maybe at like a nice nine, maybe 930. What are your thoughts? <laughs> That's might've been what I thought. But the other half of my half of my brain was like, well, that's easy. Done. Okay, cool. Now I know why I'm out here. I clearly won't have any issues with this test, so let go. <laughs> so now we get into the situation of, okay, he tells us to get into groups of six. No, 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 no. He says to count off to six and then keep counting. So one, two, three, four, five, six, one, two, three, four, five, six, so that we are subdivided into groups of six who will go into the building to do their thing, just like maps, throwback, and, you know, exit the building. And so now I know what's going on and everything's fine. So we continue to do that. Um, we are subdivided that way. I'm probably group like four or five. And after the first two groups, that is when a situation arises that is neither good, but not bad, but more bad than good. <laughs> and that is where, with three more groups to get to mine, approximately, my bladder says, hi, um, it's, it's bedtime and usually around bedtime I get to go to the restroom and it's crazy because I haven't got to do that. So I'm going to need you to figure this out because give me a few more minutes and I, I'll i figure it out. <laughs> and that translates to my bladder said, it's a code red. We are, we're going to be getting very close to the brim. You need to use the restroom, sir. And now, of course, as we've all been in this situation before, you start to ask yourself, do I use the restroom? and get rid of my, uh, my ammo, you could say, for the upcoming drug test. And then be beep out of luck. Or just really pray, <laughs> pray that I will be able to find some more when the, when the situation calls for it, you know, rise to the occasion. Or do I torture myself as long as I can in the hope of going in that building by the time you know, but going in the building for my turn, about when my bladder, bladder was gonna explode and, you know, re-dye my pants. I, of course, as most would, opt in to try to hold it because I, I really have faith in myself. Even though we're already pretty at a, you know, code orange, code red, I'm like, I think I got like a nice 12 minutes in me. <laughs> so fast forward, the two groups go in, that are ahead of me. And now there's only one more group that's ahead of me. And finally they get called in and I'm probably like not visibly shaking, but I'm like, you know, where you're like just barely keeping it private that you are in a state of emergency. <laughs> like I was only one notch away from like, <sighs> I'm the next group. I can do this. The Lord has blessed me. <laughs> However, everyone, Stop. You are not about to hear a story about me peeing on myself. I don't know why you just looked at you. Why you? Why were you interested? You, stop. <laughs> However, the group that went in prior to my group took much longer than the other groups. I was timing it because you know when you're, you know, you know that we start timing things when we need to. We can be precise and strategic when we need to be. So. Each group was approximately spending six to eight minutes in this building prior to a group exiting that had gone in earlier than them. And then a next group would get to go in. So about six to eight minute rotation. That's what I'm thinking. That was my calculation. So with that in mind, tell me why the group before my group, it was at 10 minutes. I looked at my watch. I said, why, why am I being tried? Why is the universe trying me right now? I want to know. That's all I want to know. So, sometimes you have to take, you know, the situation into your own hands. <laughs> and that does not mean, while in uniform, ping Mahana Bush.
no. That is when I uh, gave up on the whole, the whole resist. <laughs> resist plan, um, I went directly up to my MTI and described to him the immense pain that my middle region was going through during this uh, period of time. And I said, may I please enter that door as a, as a lone, a lone troop <laughs> and ask if I can just relieve myself immediately, but preferably in one of their darn cups that they need from me. And my MTI after trying to keep a straight face and doing pretty well, but I could see he was slightly giggling. He said, well, he didn't, he didn't make a sound, but I knew, I knew. He said, yes, trainee admin, proceed. <laughs> so I go into the, the ominous looking door situation. I go through the hallway that of course had a blinking light in the middle. Like, you know, the, the light, yes, trainee admin, proceed. So I go into the the ominous looking door situation. I go through the hallway that of course had a blinking light in the middle. Like, you know, the, the light bulb that's trying to stay alive. That's of course what this hallway looked like. I swear it was, it must be used for a haunted house in, in, during the Halloween season because this is a tragic building. So I go in and I find, you know, two other people lined up waiting for their turn. And I see like six other people who I guess are assistants to the main man who gave us that brief about what the heck we are doing here. Who knew there were so many humans in this scary building, right? <laughs> so I uh, try to subtly <laughs> say <laughs> to one of them and I let them know it's a code red. And thank God they say, no problem, go to Mary over there, uh, sign your sheets of paper that are required for this test situation and she'll get you good probably within a minute and 30. So luckily I was able to quickly, hey Mary, shout out to you Mary, <laughs> meet up with Mary. She was like, okay, just sign here, take this, it goes to that way. We actually have one restroom that just opened up and Godspeed, good sir. Long story short, my bladder did not explode. To wrap it all up, it was a drug test, as you already know. It was very, very late at night. We were not briefed at all regarding the drug test. Uh, we went in in groups around six, uh, six, six to eight, uh, depending upon your flight size. There was another flight that marched and parked right beside our flight, maybe 20 minutes after we had started going in. And so this is a thing, it seems. We just had different appointment times that went pretty late into the evening. Um, and then finally, it's worth mentioning that our flight did not leave to go back to our dorm. Probably if we arrived around like 8.45, 9, depending on how, how long the march from Alcatraz 1.0 to Alcatraz 2.0 took, um, we were there for about an hour, an hour and 20. So we didn't leave till like 10, 10.30. We definitely weren't back till like 10.30 at night. And it's worth mentioning that the next day you will not get to sleep in. There's no sleeping in other than the first night that you arrive from basic training. Sometimes they will let your flight sleep in if people arrive, let's say at like 3 a.m. If enough people arrive late enough, they're just gonna let y'all sleep in that first day. But I digress. The point is, is it will be a late night if it's similar to how my flight experienced the surprise drug test, but it is not horrendous, especially now that you know where you might be being marched when this does occur. Unfortunately, in our flight, I think two trainees were gone within a week and a half of this drug test night. They were there and then they weren't. But in conclusion, <laughs> the main moral of the story is don't do drugs, kids. Just don't do drugs, especially not right before basic training. Just don't do drugs. <laughs> and also, I want to leave you guys with, I hope you had an excellent Martin Luther King Day. You know, it's a very important day and I hope you also reflected on how far we have come as a community and as a nation, but also how far we have to go. Now, if you want to see a little bit more of my face, you are able to find me on Instagram and Twitter at MichaelAinman underscore. And I look forward to seeing all of you guys, or I guess you guys see me, next week. <laughs> Have a great day. Bye.